Boy, oh boy, oh boy, this just continues to like unfold and spiral and snowball. This beef between Heather McDonald and Justin Martindale has now turned into this giant feud between Heather McDonald and Jeff Lewis. And Jeff Lewis is blasting her on his radio show today. So get ready. We're about to break it all down. Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, pop culture junkie, reality TV insider, published author and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. The Zach Pack is in the house. I'm sure we got some chumps and some chumpettes and some juicy scoopers. There's a lot to break down. Jeff Lewis is not holding back, and he is laying into Heather McDonald, which is kind of wild to see. Um, but here, as kind of like the Jeff Lewis expert, the Jeff Lewis versus Heather versus Justin expert, she was on just a little while ago, a few days ago, actually. I feel like we've been nonstop talking over the past few days as we're texting about this entire drama as it continues to unfold. You know her from Daily Dose of Donna. Please welcome back, Donna Bowling. <laughs> the Jeff Lewis expert. <laughs> you are you are like my Jeff Lewis expert now. Well, you know, I was texting you live while I was listening this morning, just in awe. My 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 jaw was on the ground. Okay, so here are a couple of uh, like highlights from it, but I want to like really get into the nitty gritty with you because you listened to all of it live this morning on. I Jeff did. So. Um, which you and Jeff Lewis obsessed have been covering this extensively. You're like my go-tos right now. But so some of the recaps are Jeff revealed that he has blocked Heather McDonald on social media. He isn't taking any of her calls. He says that Megan Weaver reached out to Heather a while back to work some things out because they wanted to kind of, she wanted to squash the beef, but Heather responded to her and simply just said no. But then recently, since the Justin falling out, that Heather now tried to reach out to Megan and she's tried to meet up now. Jeff also says that he has plans to have Justin Martindale on the show, who's the comedian that used to be a co-host or a regular, a recurring guest on Juicy Scoop that has since had a falling out with Heather. And he did his podcast episode where he basically explained all the reasons he no longer works with Heather. One of them being Heather blocked him from going on Jeff Lewis Live. Also, there's some, there's a lot to do with these diamond earrings um, and their mutual friend, Krista Lamas. I'm hoping you can provide a little clarity on that. I got some clarity. Yes, because I guess she was one of Heather's best friends or she claimed she was one of Heather's best friends. And now even Kelly Dodd has chimed in and she's claiming that Heather lost one of the diamond earrings. And now Jeff wants uh, wants uh, Krista to sue Heather. It's a lot. Um, what were your biggest takeaways from the conversation? Oh, my gosh, you guys. So obviously, you know, you just broke down so many of the small like there, it's so it's so layered, which is so crazy to think about. And what I try to explain, because everyone's like, this is such drama and I don't want to get into it. And I feel like we're just, it's like mean girl, mean boy behavior. Sure. But what's so trippy about this is this weird kind of um, breaking the fourth wall. Right. Yeah. And as viewers, we're used to watching this on a TV show. Yeah. But when you see the people talking about the TV shows, fighting and talking about it so live, I said, it's like, as if, can you imagine tonight? Well, there's no shows on because of the strike, but can you imagine like on the tonight show, all of a sudden we have Jimmy Fallon, like really going deep and hard into Jimmy Kimmel. And like, it's real. And you're seeing yeah. them talk about each other. We wouldn't be able to turn away. No, but it's also weird because it's so like break, like you said, breaking of the fourth wall that I don't think many people understand all of the like, intimate details that are involved about like guests and not having guests on and liking comments. Like I think people see it from like a surface level, but they don't understand it from like our point of view because we're also in it. That, like we understand what it means to have a friend like a negative comment and you know, it's, and then hide or, you know, do the, 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 my exclusive tale behind a paywall. Like it's just it's, totally it's interesting. I would say like, from when I think about this, I think about, Remember how on Real Housewives, this is something we can all connect connect over. We never talked about the show. 
We knew they were shooting a show. We never talked about the show. And then all of a sudden, these last couple seasons of all the shows, it's about the show. And even on Vanderpump Rules in the finale episode, they were talking about, well, we were at Watch What Happens Live promoting our show. So this is what we're seeing. We're seeing like everything is just merging into one. And you're right. When you are a podcaster and, you know, I am, I don't have a serious radio show like Jeff and I have not been doing Juicy Scoop like Heather for so many years. They are both at the top of their game. Okay. These two people have massive audiences, massive. Like, I don't think people understand how big their audience is. I think I know, and you know, because every time we talk about it, you see the numbers, like people are very invested in this. Um, It comes down to a few things. This is a 30 year friendship, 30 years. That has definitely not been smooth sailing. They've had their ups and downs. I think you always will if you're friends with someone like a Jeff or friends with someone like a Heather. Um, But this is 30 years that has gone down the drain. And what's crazy about it is it didn't start with Jeff and Heather. It started with Justin and Heather. And Jeff's name was brought up in this conversation. And now Jeff is at the center of it. Jeff has taken all of the, the heat of it. You know what I mean? Listen, don't piss off the gays because the gays will get salty. We will get, we will pour salt in the wound. Like it's just, and this has gotten so, so messy. So it started with Justin do, or Heather went on a Patreon and mentioned a pool party that she was. Do you want me to like give you like a, like a little bit of fast timeline? Yes. Fast or no. Okay. I'm going to do this as fast as I possibly can over the summer back in March. Back in March, things started to go a little weird with Heather because Heather and Megan, who's Jeff's co-host, and also she appears on Hollywood House Lift next time. She's an interior designer. Yeah, she was they on ha- you know. Yes. Okay. They had a big, like, you know, blow up thing in Palm Springs after a long day of drinking. And Heather went on her Patreon and released one of the first of her many emergency Patreons. Now we know there's a few of them. But she released a- an emergency Patreon on a Sunday night because she said, I want to tell you my side of the story before Jeff goes on his show tomorrow. It was a very honest truth. Like, this is my side, and I want to make sure you guys know the story before it kind of gets retold for me without me there. So, listen, am I one of the people that subscribed to Heather's Patreon when that shit dropped? Yes, I was dying to know. And I was not a juicy scooper, but I'm a a Jeff Lewis fan. So I, of course, went back and listened to it. Now, since then, Heather and Jeff stopped talking. I mean, stopped doing the, each other's show. They took a break from each other. Heather was like, I'm not going to do Jeff Lewis live again. I can't trust him. I can't trust that show. And it was this weird five months. And just recently, two weeks ago or whatever, she finally got back on a show and she was given an entire hour with him, essentially an entire hour to kind of describe her side of the story. So Jeff and Heather seemed to be okay. They were also on Watch What Happens Live together right. like three weeks ago or whatever. So they seemed to be okay. And not two days later, Heather released a Patreon. This was two weeks ago, talking about bully behavior. Yeah. And she mentioned in this Patreon, and I actually didn't listen to this one, but this is what I heard. She mentioned something likening Jeff Lewis to Chelsea Handler and a little bit of the drama there. So Jeff didn't like that. He's like, you just left my show. Whatever. Now, meanwhile, Justin Tim, Justin Timberlake, by the way, Justin Timberlake's also involved in this drama. Just kidding. Justin Martindale comes on in and, and opens up on his podcast last Wednesday called Just Saying with Justin Martindale. And he does like a 30 minute, um, really vulnerable, open, I thought, conversation. He definitely seemed hurt when I watched it on the YouTube, on the YouTubes. And he basically, he basically shared like a few different things that have come up in the last few months that have made him now realize he and Heather cannot be friends. He doesn't feel he's supported by her. And there's many reasons why, and I don't know how deep you want to get. Then she goes on Patreon on Friday morning. It gets released in the early, early morning hours. And she essentially, she doesn't name Justin Martindale, but she mentions Justin Martindale as a former co-host, former guest. And essentially, she says that what he said was not true. He said, Justin Martindale, one of the many things he said was, I saw Jeff Lewis at the Bourbon Room a few months ago, and Jeff Lewis said that he would want me on his show, but I can't do his show because Heather McDonald needs to approve it, and she won't allow it. So Heather didn't say, 
I didn't have that conversation, but she did say, I do not offer exclusive. I'm not an exclusive person. I always allow my guests to go on other shows. Well, Jeff Lewis got wind of this. And on Friday's show, he said on his live radio show, I don't want to be involved, but like, I wasn't going to get involved yesterday. Yeah. But now that I'm, you know, I need to stand up for myself when I believe someone's lying about me. And this conversation did happen. Yeah. So that was the beginning of the end. And then that's when Heather released her Patreon episode where she No, got- before that, before that, Jeff, we find out today, blocked Heather on Instagram oh, yeah. that day, like before the next Patreon, which is, a, you know how this is. Unfollowing, blocking on Instagram is like so- knife to the heart. I unfollow people so easily, but it's not that deep to me. I'm just like, I need a break. I'm going to put you on pause. And then mute. I'll- I knew. Oh, yeah. I mute a lot of people. If um, you so ever I- unfollow me, Zach, I'm going to be concerned. Well, it's more of like, I don't know you. We haven't talked in six months, blah, blah, blah. We talk all the time. We're fine. Um, it's like, it's more of like if I met you at a party one time and I haven't spoken to you, it's been like six months and I don't think I'm ever going to see you again. Then I'm like, yeah, I don't need to follow your li-. Like, I don't know you. That's you know? true. It does clog your feed. It's true. When you follow people and then they're in your stories, like yeah. go. But this was clearly. Yeah. This An was intentional. Clear. This was a bit. This was a uh, line in the sand. And that's when she released her Patreon and she addressed the phone call. And she said, yes, we did have a phone call. But the phone call was more of just like us coming to this understanding that, you know, I don't, I'm not going to take your regular guests. You're not going to take my regular guests. We want our shows to remain, you know, unique in their own way without us having to essentially swap guests that way. Our creativity, I don't know, that way we each were able to keep our own individual creativity. So, and you know, you and I feel a certain way about that. Yes, I don't like that type of stuff. I don't like, uh, you know, this is my, this person's mine and that person's yours. And like, I just, I think there's room for everybody. And I know we've discussed that too. Um, so then she released her emergency Patreon and this is the first thing to really drop was Jeff Lewis's response on his radio show since her Patreon. And this is where he just lays into her. I literally, I'm not joking when I tell you now I listened to that Patreon probably you did too on Saturday. And I mean, I didn't think it was, I think it was fanning the flames by saying a few things, but I didn't think it was like so mean or anything like that. I just think she was doubling down and, um, you know, she didn't, she didn't take accountability or anything. Oh my gosh. Let's do a show at the bourbon room. Call Krista. Do a show at the bourbon room. You know, I, can I dance? Yes. Okay. So, um, so I think that, um, Jeff had some time to stew on it. No uh, pun intended with Chef Stew, but he had time to stew on it over the weekend. He had already at this point blocked her and he was thinking about it. Probably got a lot of people telling him more and more things like Krista and et cetera, other people. And he went on his show today. And within the first five minutes, man, this entire hour was pretty much dedicated towards his disdain for Heather McDonald. And he said some intense things. What were some of the most intense things that he said? The first thing he said was, I got to address this. I am no longer friends with Heather McDonald. Boom. And I'm like, (sighs) because I thought he was going to say, number one, I didn't know he blocked her. He said, I blocked her. He also said, I posted the screenshot. He had a screenshot from a Patreon comment that she agreed with someone who said Jeff is like the root of the issues. And she liked the comment and agreed. She wrote, I agree. And so he screenshot that and posted it on his Sirius Radio Channel's Instagram feed. I thought someone else did that in a catty way. No, Jeff said, I did it. He owned that one. I can't even believe he knows how to post on Instagram. For some reason, I feel like he doesn't, he wouldn't know how, but he said he did. He blocked her. So he was feeling all these strong feelings. He said, I am no longer friends with her. He said, she's a liar. He said she manipulates. He said he play, she plays the victim. He called her a bully. He said, um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Then he brought up some crazy other stories. Crazy, like the earrings, which we can talk about. Okay, explain the fucking earring. Because I'm like, <laughs> unless it's it's Kim Kardashian losing her earring in the ocean or, <laughs> or Erica Jane's earrings, I'm like, why are earrings so (laughs) why are earrings such a thing like i don't i'm confused about the earring situation because even kelly jaw like put herself to the next what happened with these fucking earrings did they crystal lamas okay crystal lamas is a mutual friend of all of these people and she 
had these ten thousand dollar earrings. I think I heard ten thousand, but I could be making them up. But it's diamond as well. Okay, diamond hoop earrings, like nice, expensive earrings. And in April, she lent them to Heather, who then went to St. Bart's with Kelly Dodd and company. And there's a lot of video of this trip that she was on. And she was just getting hammered at the at the beach bars. They all were dancing on the tables, you know, whatever. And there's one video in it was an Instagram story, I guess, where she's dancing wild and you see the earring kind of fall out of her ear. OK, okay. this is in April. So we don't hear anything about the earring as listeners. We don't know anything about anything. Right. But today, Jeff says so speaking of litigious, because he was talking about lawsuits, he says, speaking of lawsuits, Krista has been trying to get her earrings back for well over a month. And she keeps reaching out to Heather and Heather has not responded to any of her calls or any of her reach outs. And you know what? That's $10,000. Like, I think Krista should sue her. Like, I mean, he was just yeah. like stoking it, right? Well, funny enough, um, and, and there was a caller that called in and said something that Heather was pretending they were her earrings, I guess. But that could just be hearsay. But I did DM Krista Lamas, who I've had a little bit of a DM conversation with over the last few months, like back and forth. Um, and I said, oh, my gosh, the earrings. And she goes, well, I do have to say I did hear from Heather today since the episode aired. And she will be returning the money or she will be paying me back. So it worked. Jeff got okay. her money back for, for Krista. So that's good. But it's crazy that it had to go on a public. Oh, and then Kelly Dodd gets involved. Oi. Yeah. Kelly she Dodd. Said, she said she witnessed the loss of the earrings, right? Yes. And you know what's crazy is like Kelly Dodd and Heather were friends, I thought. Yeah. So it just feels Kelly so. Dodd, Kelly has no loyalty to anyone, even her close friends. Like she will throw anyone under the bus. if it's I think just- so, too. It's I think so. I think that he- like Kelly was like, oh, they're talking about me. I got to get in there. <laughs> like they're talking about something I know about. I'm texting. And she, you know, she texted. Um, she's always texting, which is funny because she texted Andy Cohen on that Watch What Happens Live episode where they were talking about the quiet woman. Remember that? Yeah. Um, she's always texting. But she texted Jeff during a commercial break or whatever saying, I was with Heather when she lost that earring. And she we said to go back to the beach to find it. And she had no interest in looking for it. Which, gosh, it's like, it's pretty like kicking someone when they're down, you know? Uh, I it's kind of feel like, like, at the beginning, I was like, okay, I can see Heather's side. I can see Justin's side. Like, I get it. But now I just feel like n- this is like a let's take Heather down moment. And one person's jumped in and another person's jumped in. And now everyone's down for the fight. And everyone has a story. And everyone has something. And I'm just like. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't, it feels like everyone's just trying to jump in on, you know, the popular thing to do right now, which is to drag Heather. Is Heather perfect? I don't think Heather's perfect. I'm sure she has her flaws, but it's like, so does Jeff. Like, Jeff, Big time. Falling. Jeff fell out with, um, with Everett, with Zoila, with Gage, with somebody who was listing all the names of all the people that Jeff has had falling out, like fallings out with. So I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I think they both maybe weren't the best of friends, but like now that we're just blasting each other feels a little. Well, listen, I will say this. Jeff, Jeff's show is all about airing his dirty laundry, right? Like this, if you're not a Jeff Lewis live listener, you may hear this and be like, whoa, oh my God. But if you're a Jeff Lewis live listener, we know everything about everything. He tells us everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. He talks about his drama with Dumois. He talks about when he fights with his ex or when he has an issue with his dog trainer and, you know, the neighbor who hates his loud pool pump. We know it all. And because of that, I do think that it's not like it wasn't the right place or the time. In fact, I really like that he did it on his public show. Yeah. Um, I know you have to pay for a serious, but I think a little bit is off-putting for a lot of people is why Heather keeps only coming to Patreon and not on her free show. She has a very big free show. Yeah. So, um, so that's part of it. But they both have platforms. And I'm sorry, Zach, if you went out there and just dogged on someone who had a public show, do you not yeah. think they'd come back? No, yeah, I just, it's, uh, it's, I know it's ouch. It's ouch. I mean, I just, yeah. Well, I think a lot of people feel very 
invested with both of them. Like a lot of people feel like they've grown up with Heather and Jeff kind of like they've been listening to both of them for five, six years. And this sucks. You know, it feels like someone said in the comments and I said on my show earlier, it feels like mom and dad are fighting yeah. and it it's like you don't like it. It doesn't feel safe. It feels like, oh, no, what's next? Are we getting a divorce? Like, do we have to move? <laughs> like, I mean, Where's this going? Listen, the divorce has been filed. The judge has approved it. Like at this point, we're moving through. We're about to have two Christmases. But like, I don't know. I just feel like it's gotten so like intense considering the friendship was it's like we threw away a friendship that was so long overnight over Justin Martindale coming in to kind of just, you know, fan some flames. It's I don't crazy. think it really was Justin Martindale. I think my gut feeling is that this is a long string of events. You know how sometimes you have that with friends? Like, yeah. you're just like, God, it doesn't feel like good anymore. There's always something that happens with this person. Like, every time you hang out, there maybe there's like a little bit of weirdness or you get into a little bit of a spat. I don't know. My guess is this was probably just like a straw that broke the camel's back. And I will say, because we got a comment here, it was a mean comment, so we don't need to read it, but it was something like you're doing the same thing. Like we're talking about it, right? We, are. And we can't deny that. My show is about it today. Your show. Oh, by is the way, click when the ad comes up, make sure you click through so I can make that ad rev people. Where's the ad? <laughs> How do you know? Oh, you mean right now on the show? <laughs> when it comes, yeah, yeah. When it comes up, make sure you click it so we can get the click through ad. Listen, this is what we all do. It's what yes. Jeff, what Heather does. Like these are, you know, I, I think I said this the other day too. Like the, the hard part is that it's so personal and it's gotten messy, right? Mm -hmm. That's the unfortunate part. But the reality is these this is what we do. We talk about these things. We, the, our lives play out and, you know, it is what it is. Um and like Heather makes her money off of Patreon and her podcast. Jeff makes his money through Sirius XM. Like, you know, these are their platforms. These are, the, these are the platforms that they have. They just also happen to be able to monetize off of those platforms. But what did he say? He also said that Heather made what, like 30 or 40 grand so off this of was, the Megan Weaver drama. So this is crazy. So when, when Heather was on Jeff's show, he straight up asked her, he said, no, he I said, I, Jennifer, no, nobody's denying that they're making money off of this. Well, well, but also, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, I think for me personally, I think that when Heather, when Heather was on Jeff's show, okay. When Heather was on Jeff's show, whoa, so many people watching. See, people are so invested in this. It's crazy where it's not just us. Um, but she, he asked her, he goes, did you make a lot of extra money off Patreon subscribers when the news folk, you know, broke? Yeah. of you and Megan. And she was like, I'm not really sure. Well, of course I knew that was a lie. Cause if I subscribed to it, think about how many more people subscribed. Same. I subscribed this weekend. There you go. So she eventually, then, then Jeff said, well, Krista Lamas knows where the bodies are buried. I guess she and this Krista Lamas were really, really close. And she had specifically told Krista to the penny. I make 30 to 40 additional thousand dollars on Patreon since the Megan drama. She made a lot of money off that fight by bringing it to Patreon, which, by the way, like, I mean, it just goes to show, like, I, I, you can't fault someone for wanting to make money, right? This is the industry that we're in. I just think sometimes friendships should be maybe taken a little bit more in account. The problem is if you're only going after business and money and it's like a dog eat dog situation, that's where it gets a little tricky. I think it's not just about the money. I think it's also about the ego. I think they want to protect their own reputation. And so each of that, like, you know, they want to prove that they're not liars. And it's just, it's messy. It's messy. It's messy. And I just, I'm living for the drama. We're obviously monetizing off of the drama. But at the same time, it's just, it's, do you think there's any coming back for them? I'm dying to know how Heather responds. I think everyone is now waiting with bated breath. Is she going to go on her live show, which airs? Well, there was one this morning, but it was pre-recorded with yeah. Fortune. She has one on Thursday. Is she going to talk about that at the open? You know, normally she doesn't talk about these personal things on her pr free show. So is she going to talk about it on Thursday? She definitely will release a Patreon because she does every Friday. And I'm sure she's going to talk about it. The question is, does she come back at it and say, listen, this and this is what I like hope for her is that she came back and says, like, this sucks. 
yeah. like this sucks and this feels horrible as a person, as a, you know, my career is in question now. Like people are, it, it's a crisis for someone's career when, when you're being like skewered publicly this way. No, don't you think? Yeah. Somebody call Bethany Frankel. This is a crisis. Get be strong on the mission. Hashtag. <laughs> I would say call Molly McPherson, who's my TikTok PR guru. She's amazing on TikTok and she always has like really good um, crisis communication. I'm like, what would Molly do? I should get yeah, her on I our show. The funny thing is, I think Heather also has really good advice for when house housewives are going through scandals and drama. So that I hope, true. I hope she can take herself out of it for a minute and just look at it objectively. I think she should go on her free show and not the Patreon because we've already done the Patreon. And I'm pretty sure she's made well over if she made 40 grand off of the Megan stuff. I'm sure she's made well over that with this because this situation is so much bigger, you Huge. know. Uh, 1300 in the live watching live right now. Thank you guys. Please hit the, the like button and subscribe if you're enjoying us and check out daily dose of Donna as well. Thank you. Great, great show. Um, oh. Lots more collabs to come with us. So stay tuned for that. But I think what Heather, if only I could be as cute as you, Zach. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm going to go blonder next time. You're so sweet. Um, <laughs> so Heather needs to go on her, her public Patreon. Maybe it's in the opening and just be like, listen, I'm, I just want to start off by saying I'm deeply hurt by two people that I thought were my friends. Justin, yes. I thought I had a really good relationship with, but Jeff is somebody that I've known for 25, nearly 30 years that I just, I don't know how we got so lost and I feel terrible that it's gotten to this place. I'm hurt by my friends, but at the same time, I also am hearing that there's feedback from them and there are concerns that they have about me throughout the duration of our friendship. And instead of invalidating that, I need to listen to that and take in that feedback and realize that maybe there are situations where I could have handled things better. Maybe, you know, I did lose the earrings and I was too afraid to approach it. And rather than just addressing it head on, I thought it would be easier if it would just kind of go away because Krista probably can afford another 10 fucking thousand dollar pair of earrings and didn't need them that bad. Mm -hmm. Whatever. But at least like take some accountability, take some personal inventory and say whether she even believes it or not, but just be like, listen, these people are saying these things about me. That it's really hard to hear. And I trusted these people and I wish it didn't have to be aired so publicly, but I do have to listen to this feedback, take it in, realize I'm not perfect. And now moving forward, I don't know where we go from here. I don't know if we can repair these relationships. Obviously my relationship with Jeff was decades long that I would hope that that wouldn't just get thrown away for some cheap clicks and some, you know, sensationalized drama that everybody's talking about right now. All I have to say is I'm sorry to them if I hurt them. I hope that we can all move forward from this because being a part of a scandal is not anything that I want. I hate that my character has now been put into question, but I would like to move forward from this. Taylor Swift, please remove me from this narrative. I will we'll be moving on. We're going to have fun, light pop culture talk for the rest of this episode, you know, and, and kind of just leave it there. I really hope she watches this because that was a really good idea. I think don't drag Jeff. Don't come for Jeff. Don't come for Megan. Don't come for all the, like, don't do that. Just own it. Take it. Own it, baby. Own it, baby. Own it. Lisa Rinna style. Just own it. And just don't engage any further. Have some humility. Don't put it on the Patreon. And I think all of the people that still love Heather will continue to love Heather. And on top of that, you know, It'll, on top of loving Heather, I feel like all the people that she's lost will also, you know, come back. I think it's two things. I think it's two things. I think what you just said is really important. Accountability is huge. Ownership is huge. No, you're not cowardly. Why? You're here talking about it. I mean, listen, I've. Why is someone saying you're cowardly? Just because you're not like yelling about someone. I mean, that's the thing that we're getting as podcast. Yeah. I've also Wait, said what? I have no stakes in this game. Like I, I have no skin in the game. I don't. I'm not a diehard Jeff. I'm not a diehard Heather. I have known Heather a lot longer. I never had an interaction. Oh my gosh. This Heather. Aaron loves me too. He oh thinks I'm doing it all for the money. Well, she's then, awesome. You know what, Aaron, then thank you for getting, thank you for helping us make that money. Um, <laughs> I hope to buy some $10,000 earrings. Yeah. I want some $10,000 earrings that I can loan to a friend and they can lose them. <laughs> It's crazy how you and I are getting dragged into it. And I said, like, just because we're talking about it, here's the thing. You guys want to hear about it. Yeah. Like, we're not here talking about it. 1,400 people watching this live. Clearly, there's an interest in it. 
It's crazy. It's like if we it's it's as if we work for Fox News and we're talking about like an election candidate. Like you guys are so mad at us just talking about what we're listening to on the radio. The truth is, I love you. Oh, 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 this is a different Aaron. She's good. Okay. I was like, what? You changed your tune so fast. Um, so I do think, I really do think at the end of the day, like this is so so um, interesting for all of us because you're seeing some real life friendship dynamics play out right in front of us. Yeah. And it's all relatable. We've all been in cases like this. We've all had situations where friends have turned on us or have said bad things to us. No one's ever done it in this public forums. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know, so of course we're interested, but Heather has such a huge community. She has such a loyal and dedicated group of Juicy Scoop fans. She really does. And I know that we're seeing a lot of negative, like you said, but there's also a lot of positive out there on her yeah. Patreon comments in her. I mean, I'm not in her Facebook group, but I, I've heard that, you know, those people love her. She has a lot of fans. She'll be OK. And yeah. so will Jeff. And this is all going to benefit them in a weird way, maybe not in personal life, but their bank accounts. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. And I think in their personal life, too, listen, if the friendship was so easily disposable, then you know what? They didn't really lose a friend. I think. Yeah, I mean, that's sad to say, because I know that they've known each other for a long, long time. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, I don't think Jeff felt like he could trust Heather. I think that's kind of what was coming out today. I don't think it was about the Justin Martindale podcast. I think it was a, a bunch of things kind of leading to this Are moment. We, and this finally was the moment where it just all popped off. But I also don't think just Heather felt like she could trust Jeff because she was commenting on her Patreon all weekend long. You know, I agree. I agree on any comment against Jeff. I don't think that either of them are like blindsided by this break. I think they both have been feeling a lot of feelings for the last few months. And I also feel like, you know, it's sad because at the end of it, Jeff, Jeff's reaction, by the way, we all know people like this. Some people, when they're sad or when they're hurt, their first reaction is to cry or like be sad. And some people go for the jugular. And I think Jeff is that guy. It's you. I, yeah, I can get a little feisty. I'm just I like, don't. I'm impulsive and I'm just like, ah, and then I'm like, why did I do that? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I do think Jeff really reacted fast. He reacted before thinking or maybe he thought and like didn't really. Th he was so gung ho on, on getting this out. I guarantee you he's feeling a little shitty all day about it. There's no way he's walking through life feeling on top of the world knowing he said such hurtful things. No. Um, I I think that I think that this was a negative relationship. It clearly was not bringing out the best of them. But no. he was sad. He said, I'm sad. I miss, I would, I'm going to miss her. He said, I have so much fun with her. And every time Stu and I would see her at a party, we were always so excited to be with her. She's a good time, you know? Yeah. I think, I don't know if their friendship really went that deep. I think they kind of have known each other for a really long time. They were able to kind of stay in the industry together. Maybe they had some moments, but if it, if they were so easily able to kind of just get to this place, then I don't think the friendship was that deep, but I, I mean, think it was. no, no, I think, but that's the thing is it's like there there's Hollywood friends, right? You know, you have your friends that are kind of in the industry and you kind of know them, you know, and you, you make appearances with them or you see them out socially, but you know, at the end of the day, is it really that deep? And I don't think it was for these two. And unfortunately, or maybe, I don't know, Heather seems to be a little more hurt by this. Um, I guess they just have different reactions, right? Heather seems to retreat and Jeff seems to be the type to kind of lean into it more. And then when there's all the drama and the scandal and the people and everyone's I'm team this and I'm team that, I think that just kind of amps it up even more. I would be interested to know what Heather is feeling right now in this moment. Um, you know, I said it on my show. She DM me last night and we didn't talk obviously about Jeff because this was not a something yet you know it was more about me and her communicating about a couple of things about like some miscommunications because I know that there's like this weird narrative in the juicy scoop obsessed page that I'm a Heather basher and I'm really not I actually like the Megan Heather drama that got me involved in all of this I was horrified for Heather I just want you guys all to know and now there's 1.5 thousand here I was so horrified for Heather in that moment. I, th I thought that was just got, that has got to feel horrible for a girl that you think you're friends with to tell you, you know, no one likes you and you're a social climber and this like, 
I really, so go back to March episode of when I'm talking about it and you'll hear, I am not like an, uh, a Heather, I mean, a Jeff apologist. I see both sides. I really do. I'm just saying in this sp specific instance with the Justin Martindale of it all, my gut feeling was telling me that what Justin was saying probably was more true. I, I don't know. That's just what my gut feeling was telling me in this case. Yeah. I don't know. Listen, what about you? Like I said, the gays get messy and we will drag you. Listen, I didn't love... And I know Justin's come out and he didn't love my coverage of this, but I've tried to remain like completely objective. And I've been like, listen, I see these points for Heather and I see these points for Justin. And in this case, I can, I don't know. I feel like Jeff really blew shit up today though. I, I don't know how much other than like, there's a lot of pain there and a lot of hurts. So let me just really scorch the earth. I thought that that was a little intense. And now, like I said, it does kind of feel like a gang up on Heather. Um, what about, Jill Zarin. She's going to be on Jeff's show I on Friday. Know that. And she and Heather are close. You know, but I think Jill Zarin's also kind of the type that can be in the middle and that can be a mediator and may even kind of be like, okay, Jeff, I get it. But like, you know, I think she'll try to like mediate between the two of them. I'm sure Heather's already talked to Jill knowing that Jill's going to be on. I think that Jeff, Jill's going to be like your good Jewish mother. Okay, yep. Jeff, remember, remember all the good things. Yeah, the kids are fighting. Let's see if we can make it nice. I'm sure Jill will try to organize because Jill's obviously going to come to L.A. for this. I'm sure Jill will try to organize a dinner with Jeff and Heather so that we can kind of hash things out. I think Jill's going to be very motherly in all of it. I think it's I think it's too soon, but I would be very interested to see. And Jeff is going to be at BravoCon and Heather is going to be there. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. I mean, there may be an op there might not be an opportunity for them to like see each other. I I don't know if this is completely done. I don't think I think they can go back to being like surface level Hollywood friends again, where they'll see each other. Maybe they'll be able to do like a watch what happens live together again. I just don't think the friendship will ever go that deep because I don't think they can trust each other. But I also don't know if they've really ever thought that they could trust each other. You know. Yeah, I think it's definitely, I mean, there, I think Jeff, I would say right now in this moment, Jeff should be a little bit ashamed of himself. I think he w went too far. Went I think, I think he, he, he hit too low be below the belt. I feel like sometimes it's almost better to stay your peace and then like stay above. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's not like Heather dragged Jeff. Right. Heather went on her Patreon and was like, yes, this phone call that Jeff referenced did happen. I didn't talk about it because it was a private phone call. But yeah, she addressed that the phone call did happen and that that was real. I think Jeff scorching the earth maybe was a little much. It was about the comments, though. It was about her agreeing with the fact that she was the problem. Yes, 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 yes. He felt very, very hurt by it. He yeah. said it. I don't know what warranted this. I didn't. I didn't feel like I've ever done this this kind of thing to her. I would never do this to a friend. Like if I'm friends with someone, I'm not going to let you talk shit about them and I'm not going to agree with it. Yeah. I get that. We um, all get that. But it, yeah. I get I it's hard because it's like I see both sides of it. We do. I have no skin in the game that it's like I can't be it's not like this is my sister or my brother, you know what I mean? It's like these are just two people that are in this space, you know, one is a radio show and one is a really popular podcast. That like to me it's like I I don't have, you know, any sort of reason to pick a side. I am 100% with you. I feel like it was Oh, what did Fem Terrid end up saying about it that it was going to get explosive, huh? She said it was going to get explosive. Something big was going to drop this week and it was going to be really bad for Heather. Oh, my God. She literally talked to Jeff. And she was like, she got it right. This is like, did you hear, though, about how Jeff has that friend, Patrick and Paul, right? And Paul yeah. did these coffee grinds, this Armenian coffee ground reading, which now I want to do it. And he said there's going to be three volcanoes, basically three people. And it was Julian Brandy. Everyone's assuming Julian Brandy. And the third volcano is Heather. I mean, well, let's be honest. Jeff has had a lot of volcanoes. <laughs> He's got so many volcanoes. But that's the funny thing about Jeff, and I will say this. Jeff is the first to say, I'm so sorry. I'm such an idiot. Like, I totally overdid it. He goes on apology tours. He's a big, like, 
believer in the fact that he messes up and he apologizes. He's not scared to say, I fucked up. And I do think that there is a level of um, the accountability is important. It's not going to be completely like it's not going to erase the damage. But like when he said that thing about Kyle Richards and Ozempic, remember on um, Watch What Happens Live, like that was a low blow and she didn't like it. But he immediately was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a joke, though. Like, I know that was such a joke that got blown so out of proportion. I was like, he made a joke. Like, obviously, he knows she's not a lesbian on Ozempic. But I think she was. No, I'm just joking. I think he meant it as a joke, but she was more upset that it then perpetuated all of these headlines that a friend made it seem like she really is a lesbian and she really is on a Zen book. I think she was more upset about the headlines that it caused rather than the comment that was actually made. And he, she felt like you're my friend. I mean, this is the thing. It's like, let's go back to Joan Rivers life, right? Like th- that's part of the job, right? The part of the job is to kind of say these things that are going to get press or get those sound bites in the news. You know, Jeff is really good at that. He's really good at that. Today was not that. Today was an attack on a, on a former friend yeah. and it's going to get press because trust me, I believe this will get press. I can't imagine if it's not on daily mail or page six, right? Oh yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah, we're just ahead of the curve here. 1.5 thousand viewers. <laughs> yes, guys, if you are watching this, go give Donna some love. Daily Dose of Donna. It's a great show. She's got all the tea on Jeff and Heather and Justin. Um, and you can catch my podcast, No Filter with Zach Peter, which airs Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So be sure to show us some love. Show our show some love. Leave us a nice Apple review if you're loving the content. Um, if you're watching this live right now, and I, first, well, I don't know if I want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let me know if you're team Heather or team Jeff in the live chat. Pick a I'm side. I'm like this, watching with my eyes closed. Jeff. I know, I am too, because it's going to get lit. People I wish there was a poll. Oh, we can do a poll. If you can do a poll, because it would be easier to see like 50%, 70%. Let's I feel like it. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask on my Facebook group too. Um, oh, lots of Jeffs. Lots of Jeffs. Oh, there's one Heather. Oh, oh. Neither. There's a lot of neither's. Team no one. I get that too. I'm at. I'm. I feel like I'm on team no one. I just don't feel like there's a reason to pick it. Like I don't know. I have no skin in the game to need to pick a side. I'm we, just here. For, I'm just here with the wine and the popcorn, watching it all pop off. I'm like. I mean, in. totally. We need Judge Judy on this one. Oh my God, Judge Judy would be great. We need an Andy Cohen style reunion. We need Heather and Jeff. And all of the juicy scoopers and all the chumps to be in a big brother house for a summer together. Oh and we need God. to watch them eliminate each other and vote each other off the island. Oh, my. Heather would have been voted off a long time ago <laughs> with the way everybody's kind of just, you know, coming at it. It's just going to end up like Chef Stu and Shane. They're going to be oh. the final two. I don't know why it's not letting me post the poll. What well, does no. what do we know about Chef Stu and Heather's relationship? I know that they've had some drama. Are they cool now? Or probably I mean, not after this. Stu is banging Jeff. He's always going to pick Jeff's side. So whenever there's like an issue, you know. I mean, that's never... a good boyfriend. Yeah, that's a good boyfriend. You I'm sure I'm sure Heather's family and husband and stuff will always pick Heather too. That's the way you should be. Yeah. You should pick your wife or your husband. I think the only one that would like not be loyal in that sense would be like Kelly Dodd. <laughs> She's just jumping from ship to ship. <laughs> yeah. She's, uh, she's even going to throw Rick under the bus if she yeah, has to. I mean, if Rick's ever in it, I don't know. Rick, good luck. I don't think Kelly will have your back. <laughs> oh my gosh. And a lot of people are saying Team Heather because they think Jeff got involved. But here's the thing Jeff didn't force himself into the conversation, but his name was out there. And he was like, I don't want people thinking that, you know, I listen to Heather McDonald about who will go on my show. And that's the only reason why, you know. Are Sky and Sully your dogs? Yeah. Oh, cute. I say we're all we all should just be team dog. Yes. Team dog. doggy dog. This is a doggy dog world. I'm team drama. I'm here for the drama. I'm here for the tea. I am so here for it, too, Zach. And I love it with you because it doesn't ever feel mean. It really just feels like no, never meant just shooting the shit. Which is oh what it gosh. really like. I mean, come on. It's like. When you're having a glass of wine with your girlfriends and you're talking about it, like the stakes are so low that it like really doesn't, you know, 
I mean, I just think people are so um, emotionally oh, yeah. invested. And, and that's the problem. We always have to take, like I got a comment on my YouTube earlier that said, why do I feel like I've been in a slump the last few days because of this news? Like it's put me in a bad mood. And I'm like, guys, we need to like, thank you for watching our shows and listening to the podcast. But at the same time, like, let's get outside. Let's get some fresh air. Get some vitamin D. Get some Read a Colleen Hoover air. book. <laughs> yeah. Have a glass of wine if you need it. Just breathe. This doesn't affect us at the end. Imagine if it's affecting you. Imagine how it's affecting them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't only imagine it. Yeah. I really can. But, you know, this is just this is a crazy, crazy chapter. Who knew this was not on my bingo card for 2023. Not at all. Nor was it like, OK, we saw Justin and, and Heather, but I didn't expect it to blow up the way that it has now with Jeff. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, I just think 2023 has been the year of crazy stuff, like Scandaval, obviously, and the Kyla Mauricio. And now this, like, what's next? How do we up the ante? Lindsay and Carl. I mean, come on. I know. It's been a year. <laughs> it's not even over. <laughs> get get your pumpkin decor out. Let's get into Halloween spirit. How, yeah. That's a that's a nice spirit. <laughs> Let's go with the Halloween spirit. I'll dress up like Heather and you dress up like Jeff, okay? Perfect. <laughs> oh, look at there we go. There's no re reason to get upset with Zach and Donna. Calm down. There we go. Thank Seriously. you. Seriously. Please don't get mad at us for just br chatting about it, having fun. But listen, until the next time somebody does a pay an emergency Patreon or a Jeff Lewis Live, we'll probably be here talking about it again on Friday once Jill Zarin comes out. I feel like we're going to have a lot more to talk about. It ain't ending anytime soon. Guys, if you are watching this, hit the like button. And thank you for joining. Thank you for chatting with me and Donna. Go give Donna some love. Check out her podcast, Daily Dose of Donna. Also check out Jeff Lewis Obsessed on Instagram. Yeah, she's Great. been in the comments. Yay. Yeah, go check her out. She's got all the tea, all the scoop, all the, the recordings from Jeff's show. And she posted today the story of of when Heather's earring fell out onto the beach on her Instagram feed. You can see it. Oh, my God. I need to watch this right now. She's what? dancing like at some St. Bart's. She's dancing like wild. And you can see that the earring falls out of her ear. Oh, no. Well, then she should have known where to go back and find it. There's photographic evidence. Oh, here's the video. Who has that earring right now? I want to know which St. Bart local is holding on to one earring. Oh. Dancing, she's dancing. Okay. We need Chris Humphreys on this case to come and find the earring. Chris Humphreys is he the one? He's Kim Kardashian's ex, right? That found the yeah. earring in the water. He found Kim's ear in the ocean. He found her earring in the ocean. Well, when it's that big and sparkly, maybe it just shine shine bright like a diamond. Yeah, it was worth a lot more than ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's true. This is Trump change for Chris. He'll be there. <laughs> uh, I love it. Donna, thank you so much for coming. Aww, I love you. Dishing. Guys, go give her some love. Go give Jeff Lewis Obsessed some love and stay tuned. New podcast episode will drop tomorrow. I'll go live again Thursday night. That'll air on the podcast on Friday. So until then, stay tuned. Maybe Erica Jane found the earring. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to go in the Smithsonian, wherever it is. Yeah, it's going to go. It's now going to go in the Watch What Happens Live. The, the clubhouse. The clubhouse, yes. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Donna. I love you. I appreciate it. I love you, you too. Bye, guys. I definitely give Donna a follow. Give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. Follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach. And stay tuned. More tea to come. All right, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye.